Ethelflaed is still known as the most free to play friendly legendary commander in rise of kingdoms because you don't have to do anything to get her you just get her for free over time as you complete the missions in the expedition and you can exchange your coins for her sculptures in the metal store and she's also known as one of the most powerful debuffing commanders in the entire game because of her active skills so today we're going to talk about a couple of pairings that you could consider using with ethel fled in 2024 if you want to fulfill that debuff supportive role but then later in the video we're going to talk more about why we don't really see ethel fled that often in the late game anymore and what that means for the current state of rise of kingdoms all right now let's quickly go over what exactly ethel fled's role is in rise of kingdoms primarily she is a peacekeeper these days she has a five target half circle aoe but the damage factor is only 800. now the benefit of this is that the damage factor is apparently according to the text here not reduced by 15 percent for each additional target hit which is the case for basically every aoe in the entire game you always see that text here but the star of the show is the 90 percent stat reduction you reduce the enemy's attack defense and health by 30 percent for two seconds this is a very powerful debuff but it is only for a short time the second skill says that you take 20 percent less counter attack damage and you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the march speed of the target either by 50 or 30 percent depending on the troop type the third skill is for killing barbarians and the fourth skill has to do with gaining more attack if you have three different troop types or a little bit more troop capacity if you're launching a rally which is really only going to be beneficial if you're launching a rally against a barbarian fort because you're not going to rally anything with ethel fled and then finally the expertise says that you deal 20 percent more damage to enemy troops that have been slowed and this is kind of like the only good thing about ethel fled really at this point and I'll explain a little bit more later but really what you're doing here is a little bit of aoe damage and a massive aoe debuff and so you want to pair her with commanders that are going to amplify what she's already good at because if you notice here there's no stats on ethel fled unless you bring three troop types you get a little bit of attack so she's really quite a squishy commander now if we take a look at her museum relic i want to remind you guys that it has been one year since we got the double enhancement for her relic she has 25 percent attack 15% March speed. This is universal stats. So no matter who she's paired with, this is going to be effective, which is actually very good in a world where March speed is very valuable. But by this point, I kind of would have expected us to have seen a third relic upgrade for Ethel fled and the other gold key commanders, because again, just like this time last year, they are starting to feel very stale and they're very, you know, they're not very usable in the current season of conquest meta and so i think another buff is uh is overdue as well as including some buffs for commanders that are not here yet such as maybe the season three commanders I think that would be really good and maybe adding a second buff to the season two commanders i think we are long overdue for that but that is a topic for another video what i want to talk about today is first of all two quick little pairs that you can consider using if you want to use ethel fled and like i said before because she is so squishy you want to hide her which means she's always going to be a secondary commander in rise of kingdoms i guess there's really three pairs that i want to talk about today the first one is huo primary with ethel fled secondary now if you expect to trade super well with this pairing you're going to be disappointed disappointed the primary role of this pair is to inflict massive amounts of slowdowns on the target because Huo's active skill gives you a 50 percent March speed reduction for three seconds that is an insane debuff that is the slowest you can basically make a commander with a single hit and that means that you're going to be dealing 20 percent more damage for those three seconds and you're also again you have a 10 percent chance to further slow them down with the second skill on ethel Floyd. but the reason that Huo is so important here is because he is a cavalry commander and as you guys know cavalry as a troop type are by far the fastest in the open field I mean they're literally riding horses it makes intuitive sense you have 80 base mark speed on tier 5 and 85 base mark speed on tier 4. now if you're going to run this pairing like i said before you're probably not going to trade super well this isn't a maximum dps march remember what i said before if you're using alpha fled you're trying to assume the role of the supportive debuffer and so you probably want to do mostly tier 4 with this army because when you do inevitably get destroyed at least you won't have a massive hospital bill and the debuff strength is irrelevant to the troop type right whether whether you have tier ones in the army or tier fives in the army the mark speed reduction is the same the 90 percent stat reduction here is the same and that's kind of the benefit of a supportive march is that you don't really have to have a very you know high troop tier in order to make it effective but like i said before 
the fact that Huo is cavalry makes this even better because it increases the probability that you're going to stay stuck to the target and actually apply that slowdown debuff either with Huo or with an Ethel fled and continue to get that 20% all damage bonus from her expertise. Also, he just packs a little bit of a punch that you don't get from Ethel fled and the March speed buffs stack here, which is really, really nice. Now this is outside of Alliance territory, unfortunately, but the Ethel fled buff is universal, which is really good. And Huo gives you a ton of defense here, which is definitely a stat that Ethel fled really needs. Now the role that this March actually plays is very unique. First of all, we talked about the slowdown here, right? We also have to talk about the decreased rage requirement. What that means is when you enter into battle with Huo and Ethel fled, she's going to be able to pop her debuff, the powerful debuff, the reason that you're bringing her very, very quickly, right? He has the 850 rage cost and he's very quick. He's going to be able to catch up to the enemy. He's going to be able to pop his active skill to slow them down. And then you're going to pop your really powerful debuff on top of them. And so with this army, hopefully all tier four, you're going to be much faster than the enemies that are typically at least partially tier five. And with the massive amounts of slowdown and debuff that you have from this army, yes, you will not trade super well with this army, but what it's going to allow you to do. And also your allies is you're going to snare that target. That one target is going to be moving so slow because of this March speed reduction here. And also the March speed reduction here, they're going to be super slow. Everyone else will have a nice chance to catch up to them to further slow them down if they have their own Huo or their own Liu Che or something like that. And that is called snaring a target. You're basically stopping them from running away and everyone can trade super well because you are decreasing their stats by a total of 90%. So with the tier four cavalry and all the March speed, you're going to run up to them. You're going to cast your active skill really quickly with your lower rage cost. You're going to slow them down. You're going to debuff them. And then by that point, hopefully everyone else and your other armies will have caught up to that target and you can swarm them down. And that's how you're going to get your trade. So it's really a big picture army. The battle reports for this army specifically might not be great, but you might be able to help enhance the battle reports of everyone around you. And that's kind of going to be the theme for Ethelfled for the next two pairings as well. The next pairing I want to talk about is a Liu Che primary with Ethelfled secondary. And this is probably the best performing of the pairs that we're going to talk about today, strictly because Liu Che is just so insane. His five target AOE is unbelievable. And guess what? He also has an AOE debuff for the March speed. This is 40% for three seconds. So that means again, you're going to be dealing 20% more damage with Ethel Flood's expertise because of the slowdown on Liu Che and the slowdown that she will occasionally get from her second skill. Now, also this has a 10% chance of occurring with a basic attack. And as you guys know, the expertise on Liu Che gives you additional basic attacks, which gives you additional opportunities to proc the instant slowdown on the second skill from Ethel Flood. So there's actually a lot of synergy here on top of the fact that Liu Che doesn't really care about a ton of skill damage bonuses. She's not dealing that much skill damage anyway. He gives you 20% March speed. She gives you 15. So even though he's infantry, he is going to be quite fast with Ethel Flood, which is really nice. And this is a double AOE pairing, which is really good in the open field. Tons of attack, a little bit of defense. There's some skill damage taken reduction here. There's a lot to love about this pairing from a debuffing perspective. Of course, there's many good pairings for Liu Che. He's so good. He's doing all the heavy lifting here pretty much. And a lot of people are going to see the Liu Che and they might think that there's something else behind it, like an Alex, like a Tarek or something like that. And they might not think that it's that big of a priority in the open field. And so your Ethel Fled will be pretty safe behind that Liu Che and just constantly be pumping out that defense, health and attack reduction here, which is really, really nice. And this probably goes without saying, but if you're going to pair Ethel Fled with Liu Che or with Huo, you're going to ignore this three unit type buff. Uh, the 20% attack is just not worth it because you lose a lot of the bonuses that you get from these other commanders, especially because they have the cavalry tree and the infantry tree. Like you really just want to go all in on those troop types. And unfortunately that means you're going to lose this 20% attack bonus. So it is what it is. Now, the final pair that I want to talk about here is actually Trajan primary with Ethel Fled secondary. And this is probably a pair that, you know, many uh, late game whales have used in the past and still use to this day occasionally if the circumstance arises where they need a march like this but most new players probably aren't going to have their hands on trajan it's probably not the best time to invest in trajan at this point as a new player there's so many better other commanders to use but if you do still have trajan or you you kind of benched him and kind of forgot about him uh, there are some instances in the open field and in, in big murder balls where you know let's say you don't have that many troops left you're late into kvk you've kind of been run dry uh then you just want to throw one march out there with a mix extra things just to help out the army Trajan of course is insanely good as a support commander he's really like the only uh meta adjacent support commander in 
the game at this point that anyone would even consider um obviously we have things like herman prime he, you could consider he's a support commander absolutely but he does deal massive amounts of damage there's other things that he is doing trajan is strictly all support and he does that role really well and the benefit here is that of course Ethel fled does pack some AOE here that you're not really getting from Trajan. And in this case, you will actually get the attack bonus because you can run three different troop types with Trajan. And so from a buffing and debuffing scenario, both these commanders really work well together. But again, you're not going to trade super, super well. Remember that these aren't a high damage output pair. And the other benefit too, is that most players know by now to just ignore the Trajan. Most players don't hit Trajan because it's not worth it. He does stack his defense like crazy. So typically he is very tanky. And so you might actually get away with this and not have a massive hospital bill. Again, you probably want to use tier four because the, the value of the buff and the debuff here is not uh, tied to the troop type. It's not like you're going to get more powerful buff by using all tier five. There's no point in doing that. You might as well run tier four, save yourself on the hospital bill. So that is another pairing that I think is definitely something you could consider either in sunset canyon or like i said in late late into kbk and if you're maybe running a seven march lineup then maybe that's something that you can consider as well but those are really the only pairs that i could consider running ethel flood with now of course in a pinch could you throw behind nevsky sure could you throw her behind i don't know cpo prime you know if you just entered season of conquest sure if you're in the very early game like season one of kvk or maybe season two you could throw her behind somebody like sun Tzu. they both have some light aoe here he has some more skill damage as well you get a little bit of infantry health which you would run all infantry here a little bit of damage taken reduction so there is a, you know early game that is definitely a pair that you could run but at the end of the day ethel Flood is has you know we haven't seen anything with her in a year it's literally been one year since since her relic got that upgrade and in that year in that time frame we've seen a lot of power creep with some of these new commanders these commanders are very very strong much better than what we saw from the previous year and ethel hasn't gotten anything to keep up and so one thing that i i think you know her role has shifted from being a sort of generic you know debuffing support commander to just strictly peacekeeping that's really all that i ever see her for these days and the fact that she has a half circle aoe makes her decent for chaining of course she has the benefits to you know rallies and things like that the peacekeeping tree all that which is good but it really begs the question like you know how could a free-to-play player use her effectively in the meta in 2024 and i think the answer is you know besides what we talked about in this video which is really pushing it by the way like these are not meta pairings that we talked about here these are not things that you see very often these are again pairings that you would do if you want to be the debuffing support player at the expense of your own tier four hospital bill right like that is what you're doing here and so in the absence of a good role for ethel fled what can be done about this and i think there's two main things first of all there is an opportunity for them to add a third relic upgrade i think eventually they probably will i didn't think we would see the first uh you know go from going from one to two i didn't think that would happen but considering that these are a currency and you know you know you can get them over time eventually people will run out of things to do with them and i think it makes sense that they would add a third relic upgrade and if they do that i would like to see these stats probably doubled i mean really like there's nothing like you can't do anything with this realistically and even if it were doubled i'm not really sure it would move the needle that much maybe if it was like the liu che pairing maybe that would be really good but at the end of the day like you would really need a miracle here or a third line a third buff on top of a of a slight increase to what we have here already like maybe bump this to 30 20 and then add a health buff or a skill damage buff or something like that right maybe an increase to her active skill damage those are ways that i think the developers can make her a little bit more relevant these days and i would really like to see that now the other thing too is i think we're way overdue i think we're way overdue for an expedition shop metal store revamp i think the refresh chances and all this i think that's fine um i think that there's you know enough commanders in the game to where you know maybe the legendary should be more common down here i think they should probably rotate ethel fled out i think once you hit season of conquest and you've expertise to ethel fled her sculptures should disappear here and they should be replaced with something else there should be a new commander that comes that is more meta viable or they should start to rotate her out with some of the other gold key commanders you know once you've expertise ethel fled give players the uh, option to switch this to something else or you know just like they do with the with the epics you know rotate this out weekly make it uh you know make it el Cid one week and then pyrus the next week and then ragnar and caesar and and, and sao tao and all these commanders and give free-to-play players a way to get their hands on some of the other legendaries that quite frankly 
frankly aren't even meta viable either they're just slightly better than epics right and it gives players something to work towards it gives players a reason to log in right i think this is a big component of you know when a new player is playing they see a legendary commander and they're like wow i can get that for free and that is an incentive to log in and play the game and i think that that's important it's important to have reasons to have new players logging into the game and unfortunately ethel flat has aged so poorly now that she is no longer a good reason to log into the game especially in season of conquest people realize very quickly that even though she is legendary she doesn't feel like she's on the same caliber as these newer legendaries and that's because she's not she's very far from the caliber of these uh of these other legendaries in the game and so i think again another relic buff would be good and then also either replace her with something new give us something new in the metal store and if they have to add more you know expedition levels or something to make it challenging like there's already a dotted path here like we got to go to this castle someday right like this castle's been on the map it, there's the dotted path leading to it we're at 80 surely that we could go to like 85 and then come up here to like 90 right like that makes complete sense to me that seems to be like it was the developer's plan to begin with when they made this map right so i don't know i would like to see maybe with the graphical enhancement upgrade sometime later this year maybe we will see a revamp to this map and and something to do in the expedition store but for now it feels like ethel flood has uh, never been less relevant like she is just so unbelievably irrelevant right now unless you're going to be like trying to debuff an enemy rally at your own expense again like there's really there's really not much to do with her which is really unfortunate outside of you know the handful of pairs that i mentioned earlier in the video so guys i would love to hear from you in the comment section below what do you think about the current state of ethel flood do you think that you know she fits that niche debuff support role really well and that she's fine there or do you think that she needs a buff do you think that she needs to be kind of retuned refreshed and maybe even replaced in the metal store i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kings players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace